Recently, we had an opportunity to go to Maker Faire Orlando, just a couple of hours away from our headquarters over in Tampa, where we got to see some absolutely amazing things from full-size power armor, from professional cosplayers, to learning how to solder fighting robots, and even adults racing souped up power wheels. These are some of the most amazing things that we saw at Maker Faire, so let's talk about it. One of the big things for us is helping out the community where we can. And so we printed over 600 make robots all out of printed solid Jesse PLA filament. And they go into this free to play claw maker that anybody, especially kids, are able to play. And yes, that was my first take to make it happen. It's a great way to get kids interested in 3D printing and have a bit of a game of skill in the process. We can see here that something that has been ingrained in the community of Maker Faire Orlando has always been the fighting robots. And the smaller weight classes were actually all sponsored by Polymaker, which I thought was a really interesting way to see a filament company sponsor and assist in a really cool community event. These ant weight and smaller robots that are just very, very tiny, but still very, very strong have lots of ability. It's cool to see imprinted. Another big draw for people are the professional cosplayers. One of the big ones being Allison Chase, whose pieces are so large, she takes up a fair portion of one of the exhibit halls with large pieces from shows like Avatar with the big Appa there. There's Attack on Titan, and of course, a huge cat bus that fits multiple people. And that's Allison right there in the striped shirt who was live on Instagram at the time. So we didn't get a chance to chat with her, but if you wanna see interviews from prior years, we'll card to one of them so you can go take a watch. Building upon Alice and Chase, we've got some of the awesome people with the Ghostbusters lab that make incredibly screen accurate proton packs that quite frankly look better than some of the ones used in the old school movies. Everything from the actual outfits that they wore to the proton packs to just everything, including a large Slimer because of course. Maker Faire also gives a lot of hands-on opportunities and for people that want to take a shirt home, well, you gotta make it, and for $10 to be able to learn how to do screen printing for your own piece of clothing, that's pretty awesome. And I guess ultimately it also saves a bunch of labor, since the people are making their own shirts, and all you really gotta do is pay for the screens, the ink, and the raw shirts themselves. It's a pretty cool business idea if you ask me. And it wouldn't be a show in Orlando without the 501st and the Droid Builders Club who build incredibly accurate R2 models, utilizing tons of 3D printing, traditional manufacturing techniques, ones that are screen accurate, ones that are even a little bit steampunk. It's a great way for people that love a fandom to be able to share that love with others. Kids love seeing R2 models, and especially when they're able to I'm gonna put quotes around talk. It is awesome for them to be able to communicate, especially when they can't tell who is actually piloting the piece. But my favorite thing at Maker Faire, outside of the adults on Power Wheels, stay tuned for that one, is where you're able to learn new skills and techniques. And one of the best ones for us is learning how to solder and have people that know what they're doing walk you through to build your own little badge with a couple of LEDs on it. PCB Way sponsored the badges to make that possible and geeks of all ages, including grandparents with their grandkids, are able to pick up a brand new skill so that, well, if they find out it's their thing, you've now been exposed to it in a meaningful way in a safe environment where, you know, you're less likely to pick up the iron from the wrong side. Uh, leave a like if that's ever happened to you, and I guess leave a like if it hasn't either. But I love the ability for people to come and learn a new skill, something that you might not learn in school and might not have the exposure to at home. This is a phenomenal way for makers of all ages to pick up a skill that, at some point in their life, they will certainly find incredibly useful. I love when we see old school and new school come together. We've got hand-spun yarn with stainless steel fibers in the yarn itself, all hand-spun, to create this awesome crocheted animal where you can touch either the hand or the top of the head, where it will talk and have lighting changes, all made by these awesome people. This is one of my favorite things at the event because it does bring a lot of old school tech and new school cool together. And speaking of old school, they had a hand loom from the 1920s showing how textiles were made many, many, many years ago. And for over a hundred years, this thing has been, well, 
taken care of well enough that it still works perfectly fine and they're able to make fabric. There's a huge dedication to keeping old school tech running where people can play retro games on the actual hardware that they came out on. So whether you grew up with it or your parents or grandparents grew up with it, it was available for everyone to play totally for free. This was something that completely blew my mind. It is a huge hand controlled by a small hand and a little joystick, all pneumatically driven with valves and servos to help control how the fingers themselves actually move. There's very few moving pieces on this entire thing. It's all just powered by air pressure from a plug-in blower. Practical uses? Not exactly certain. If you can think of one, let me know. But certainly super cool. It would make for a really awesome Halloween decoration to scare people. 100% would do something like that. And because it's totally wireless, it's a great way to show what could happen with something like a telepresence robot or remote surgery robot. Something we haven't shown a ton on the channel, but I'm hoping to show very soon is milling. This is a DMC to mini, which is a tiny little mill that comes in at under $3,000 as a kit where you can bring in sub 1,000th of an inch accurate milling to your own workshop. It is three axis. They do have a fourth axis, but this one showed only three with a multi kilowatt head. And while yes, they're showing you a demo right now, the owner tells me they're able to do full depth of cuts and 100% step overs without hurting the machine at all all with full way covers a diy option a fully built option i think it would make for a really awesome addition to a lot of small machine shops that are looking to get into milling but not looking to spend a ton of money doing it and something that i think we could really have a lot of fun with live streaming for you guys a full build on the channel so if that's something you want to see let us know in those comments and we'll send it over to dmc and see if they agree as well I do love old school cool that hasn't been obvious so far with a mold o -matic made in the 1960s for the World's Fair. This one was originally made for Disney. And while this one is currently being serviced, obviously, if you've seen these machines before, you know that smell, that plastic and wax smell. And I learned that these are actually blow molding machines and not injection molding like I'd originally thought. This one gets custom molds for it made by a local makerspace so that at Maker Faire, people can get custom pieces every single year. And it takes about 30 seconds or so to do an entire run. But something I love about it is it's from the 60s. So there's not a lot of electrical stuff that can be done. It's all electromechanical, which just adds a certain level of awesome to it. And theoretically, a fair bit of redundancy. That stuff is designed to last for a while. And my favorite thing every year, it's my favorite thing, are the adults racing souped up power wheels. We would love to bring this kind of an event to the Rep Rap Fest, 3D Printopia, and things like that near you. So if you guys want to see this awesome event come, let us know in those comments. Something that I love about it is that board... That board actually counts. I thought it was completely fake and was just a big joke. But no, that is for style points. And when you hit the buttons, it counts who you're hitting it for. I thought it was totally fake. They take this thing so seriously, but also so not seriously. And the event people that do it are part of a nonprofit. And so we could actually bring this to a rep rap fest, but that means us content creators, we're going to all have to get together and make these awesome power wheels inspired carts to race each other. And there are standards that these groups use. So none of us could really cheat all that much. And then it just comes down to, uh, well, who's got the most style points and who is the best driver. Florida man was a lot of fun. It looks like a John boat, but it's actually a sled with some holes cut in it and a bunch of duct tape put on it to make it look like an aluminum John boat. But it's a great bit of competition where you're taking yourself not so seriously, but also incredibly seriously at the same time. Love seeing adults have a little bit of fun and at about a two horsepower limit, these things still have some giddy up, but are still able to be reasonably safe. 
throughout it all. I would love to put together some kits with some of the major manufacturers out there where people could build these and get everything that they need from the motors, the controllers, and even batteries so that it really does just come down to who can 3D print the coolest bodies and who's got the best drivers out there. If you guys want to see something like that, let us know in those comments and we'll see if we can get some companies together to make this kind of thing happen at a future 3D printing event near you. But I love Maker Fair Orlando and being less than a two hour drive each way, it's a no brainer for us to be able to hang out with other awesome geeks. And if that includes you, make sure to leave a like on this video. And hey, if it doesn't, you made it this far. It's worth it. But I do want to give a huge thank you to all of our channel member supporters whose names are listed right next to me at the $5 tier and higher. Thank you for making videos like this possible. If you want to do check out last year's video, which is similar to what we normally do, it'll be right below me and we'll have 2022 as well down there. Hope you guys enjoyed this new format where it's a much shorter video, shows you a lot of cool stuff, and it is, of course, a lot of voiceovers. Let us know in those comments. I'd love to know. That is all we have for you all today. Stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one.